Cowboys. My name is Isaiah. Mine's Avery. We are your anchors for Tuesday, May 29th. Please stand for the pledge. Today is National Paperclip Day. Our lunch options for today are corn dog, mini corn dog, and chicken smackers. Our sauce today are assorted fresh fruit and a fresh veggie tray. In international news, a doctor was faced with several lawsuits after posing a series of videos. Here's CNN with the story. As she cuts into human flesh. This Atlanta area dermatologist sings and dances for the camera. HLN has obtained video of multiple instances of questionable conduct by Dr. Wendell Boutte in the operating room. More than 20 videos like this one were posted to the doctor's public YouTube channel for promotional purposes. They have since been deleted. Patients have taken notice. HLN has found five malpractice lawsuits pending against Boutte. She's reached four settlements. HLN has not found judgments decided against her, but female patients with lawsuits claim they've suffered infections, disfigurement, even brain damage following procedures at Boutte's hand. Boutte's office and her attorneys did not respond to HLN's request for comment. HLN has learned the Georgia Composite Medical Board has had information regarding Boutte's allegedly unsafe practices since at least March 2016. In an interview with CNN affiliate WSB, the chairman refused to comment directly on Boutte, but said the board does not want to rush to judgment. Um, so Boutte continues to practice. And quite frankly, that's appalling um, that they have had information about Dr. Boutte and her unsafe practices for 26 months. Susan Witt is an attorney you know, representing uh, three women who claim their lives have been changed by Dr. Boutte. Among them, Isilma Cornelius. She was really excited to start the next chapter in her life and once that office staff was aware of that they played upon the fact that she was getting married and she wanted to look good in her dress. Two and a half years ago Cornelius went to Boutte's premier aesthetic center for Botox and other minor cosmetic treatments ahead of her wedding. While in the office she agreed to more, a surgical procedure that Boutte said could flatten her stomach. More than eight hours into surgery Boutte's staff called 911, according to court documents. She is not awake. She is not awake and she is not breathing. Is that right? Correct. Well, they did start CPR um, by the time that the first responders arrived. Um, she was essentially dead. Uh, her pupils were fixed and dilated. Cornelius survived but suffered permanent brain damage. Her 26-year-old son is now her 24-hour uh -oh. caretaker. I have to basically help her in the bathroom. I have to brush her teeth. I have to um, prepare her meals, prepare her medication, of course, changing her clothes. Everything that like we're so used to doing for ourselves, I have to do that for her. Cornelius's case was settled for an undisclosed amount. Former patients tell HLN they bought Boutte's claim that she's Atlanta's leading cosmetic surgeon and her credentials. Medical school at UCLA, residency at Emory, a board certified dermatologist. But lawsuits claim she's unqualified to do many of the procedures she advertises, even though law in Georgia allows it. If you have a medical license, then there's no restriction on what you can do. Uh, we have seen cases where emergency room physicians have gotten into the cosmetic surgery business um, OBGYNs who are performing breast augmentations, breast reductions, tummy tucks. Which says the focus is on Boutte now, but she's not unique. Scientists have found out the prehistoric birds we see today survived the dino apocalypse. Apparently, the ancestors of the birds were ground dwellers and managed to survive the meteors according to Newsweek. Wilmot Collins has become the first African-American mayor in Montana after running against Smith and winning in November with less than 350 votes. Collins moved to Montana 28 years ago when he fled from Nigeria in 1990. My only thing was I hope they can give me a second chance. That's all I needed, said Collins. 
Now to Caitlin and Dante with the sports and weather. Thank you, anchors. If you're a Belzer athlete, don't forget to check the Hall TVs for summer sports camps. Girls who want to play basketball are invited to an open gym at LC from 4 to 6 every Monday to Wednesday until the end of the year. Current 8th graders who wish to play football next year are invited to attend agility training Tuesdays at 7 a.m. at LC. Now for the weather. The forecast for today will be sunny with a high of 91 and a low of 69. Now back to anchors. Thank you, Caitlin and Dante. All library books are due last week. If you forgot to hand any in, please do so as soon as possible or pay fines. If you brought money for a yearbook, please come to the studio at this time. Just a reminder, don't bring book bags tomorrow. On this day in history, in 1765, Patrick Henry's historic speech against the Stamp Act answered a cry of treason with, if, if this be treason, make the most of it. The celebrity birthday today is John F. Kennedy. He was president of the United States for America, of America. He is turning 47. Our random fact of the day is that the most expensive musical instrument in the world is a Stradivarius violin that is sold for 15.9 million. Now to Mr. Harshwood, the rest of the order announcements. Have a great day, Bruins. Good morning, Bruins. Just a couple of quick announcements this morning. First of all, if you did not get an opportunity last Thursday or Friday to turn in your Chromebook, we want to make sure that you get those turned in today. I already talked to four or five students this morning um, that were looking for the technology office to make sure they get those turned in. Guys, remember, you had to sign an agreement at the beginning of the year that you would be responsible for that device throughout the year. And if you don't turn those in, you are looking at getting a fine of up to $400 to re uh, repay for that device. So you want to make sure you get that in today or tomorrow for sure. Second thing, book bags. Guys, on Friday at the end of seventh period, I got on the PA system and made an announcement school-wide that we would not be allowing book bags here at Belzer over these next two days. The first and foremost reason for that is that you don't have your Chromebook that you need to carry around. All of the teachers have come up with lesson plans that are not going to require you to have anything more than a pen or a pencil. I also made this uh, announcement on my Sunday night call, which goes out to every single family in our school. So uh, just so you know, another reminder, today and tomorrow, you may not have a book bag with you. College prep teachers, if you have a student with you right now that has a book bag, please understand they are not permitted to carry that around today, and they need to come down to the main office. We've got a storage area set aside. We're putting everybody's name on their book bag. And today around 3.30, 3.35, we will call all those students back down to the main office, give them their book bag, and then let them go. And of course, all of those students know not to bring it back tomorrow. I realize that some of you need to clean out your lockers at some point throughout the day today. Stop by there if you need a bag. Um, ask your teachers or come see us. Uh, we can reach out to the custodians and maybe try to get some bags that you can take your things home in. Also, I want to remind you that uh, the expectations we have for your tardies and also for your behavior are the exact same they've been all year. And just like on Friday, folks, just as a reminder, if you have numerous tardies and you've passed a certain threshold, if you get a tardy today, you will be sent to ISS for the rest of the day. Same thing with behaviors. If you get sent down to Miss Obey more than one time today, understand you will be spending the rest of your day in ISS, and those rules will apply tomorrow as well. So again, uh, tolerance for any foolishness these last two days of school is very, very small. So I want to make sure everybody understands that. Come to school, do what you're supposed to do, make good choices, and you can have a really, really great positive end to your school year. Last thing, guys, I have asked all teachers today to keep students in the room. So the bell rings at the beginning of class period. Hallways should be empty because all students should be getting to class on time. I do not want to see students moving around in the hallways during passing periods. We have asked our PSOs, our counselors, our assistant principals, myself, any teachers that are on prep to be out in the hallways and any students that are out in the hallways are to be stopped. We're gonna find out where you're supposed to be. Teachers, your answer should be no if a student asks to leave your room unless it's an emergency. So please, please um, mind that expectation and make sure that we have empty hallways, keep students in class where they're supposed to be, um, 
so that we can have a great end to the school day. Guys, make it a great day.